Hello, everybody. My name's Evan Gilman, and uh, I'm a maintainer on the uh, Spiffy Inspire projects. I'm here today to give a sh short introduction on what those things are. They're actually two different projects uh, hosted by a software foundation called the CNCF. Um, I would say that these projects are focused on cloud native network security, um, but we do this without acting directly on, on the network. And before diving into how we do that, uh, it probably makes sense to talk a little bit about access control. Access control is generally all about who and what, right? Um, and to describe who and what, this is usually like what we call a policy, right? Who can do what? Um, to describe this policy, we need to understand who is who, right? Uh, so we need some kind of notion. We need some kind of notion of identity here. Um, and one way to think about modern infrastructure is kind of in these, these three different layers. One is the platform layer, and this is kind of at the bottom here. The other is the host layer, which runs on top of the platform. And then on top of this, we have a series of processes running, right? And when thinking about how to choose an identifier for this kind of system, we have a few options. Uh, the first is the platform. Platforms normally have some sort of identifier, right? Whether it's a, a VM ID or an instance ID or, some, or something like that. Um, these are okay, but the problem with these is that they're not uh, generally like very platform agnostic. If you have more than one platform, they don't play well together. Um, so we want something that's a little bit more generalized than this kind of platform ID. Um, if you go up one level, though, we have this host level and it has IP address, right? Um, and this is a super duper common uh, way to do I identity and, and network security. Um, and it's a lot better than platform ID because it's more generalized. It, it kind of applies across the board. Um, but it doesn't uh, come without its pains, right? Um, especially as the network grows, this list of IP addresses become longer and longer. You have to distribute these things somehow. Um, the t depending on the network topology can be very difficult if you have any kind of like network address translation or any sort of unevenness in, in the network where two different things have two different views, uh, that, that also becomes a problem. Um, and this is all this stuff is kind of exacerbated by the cloud native patterns where hosts and processes come and go all the time, which means you end up with a lot of churn and change in this, in this list of IP addresses that, that has to be distributed and has to be done fairly rapidly. Um, so, even though it's better, uh, generally speaking, than the platform ID, I don't think it, it, it quite uh, gets there. Um, but if you take a step back, you have to ask kind of like, what are, we, what are we really looking for in this identifier, right? So let's say we have another platform and another host and another set of processes, right? What we're really modeling when we use IP address uh, as, as the identity here is we're modeling host-to-host -host interaction. Um, but that's not exactly what we wanted. Um, when you make these policies, who can access what, you don't really want to say, like, host number five can talk to host number six, right? What you really want to say is service A can talk to service B, right? And so what that ends up being is kind of at this process level, right, where we want to name each one of these services or processes and give them an identity to communicate with each other that is disjoint from the rest of the layers of the stack below them, right? This is the problem that Spiffy solves. We call it workload identity. There are three key challenges in solving this workload identity problem. Uh, the first is uh, an identifier. We need some, some way to reference the workload or the service, right? In Spiffy, we have what's called a Spiffy ID to do this. And one way to think about this is it's just kind of like a username for workloads. It just it references a service. Um, the second thing that, that we need uh, to build up is a way to prove this identity, a way to prove this to someone else, right? Uh, and the way that we do this is with what we call an SVID, which stands for a Spiffy Verifiable Identity Document. This SVID is always signed by an authority to prove its authenticity. The third thing that we need is a way to obtain this SVID, right? Uh, so we have what's called a workload API that exposes it to workloads. 
Now this SVID, um, there are many different types of SVIDs, uh, but the one that we see uh, used the most common is an X509 certificate. Uh, so you can imagine how that might be used for mutual TLS or other kinds of X509 based authentication. Um, so Spiffy solves this problem with these kind of three general sets of things, and each one of these is a specification uh, that Spiffy, Spiffy uh, has declared. Uh, it's very hard uh, to solve this problem without these these kinds of uh, interfaces or things to find uh, because you get this fragmentation across different platforms and clusters. It becomes very hard to say X can talk to Y when X and Y are in different clusters or, or running on different platforms. And so this precisely is the problem that, that Spiffy is designed to solve. So Spire, on the other hand, uh, is an implementation of Spiffy. And its primary purpose in life is to turn this workload API on and to issue SVIDs to workloads um, in a way that is manageable. Right? Um, importantly, it focuses on this who, not really on the what part of the policy. Right? So we don't, Spiffy and Spire both don't really reason about um, access policy. Instead, we just reason about identity. So the access policy part is, is uh, totally out of scope for Spiffy Spire projects. Um, and the way that we accomplish this who, because right, we have to figure out who you are without you saying, or us trusting you saying who you are, right? It's through a process called attestation. Now, there are two kinds of attestation in Spire, um, which we'll talk about today. Um, Spire, from a high level, uh, comprises uh, two primary components, a server and agents. Right? Um, agents, when they come online for the first time, come online without any kind of need for a secret or anything like this. They come online, they talk to the server, and then the server figures out who they are, um, usually through like platform interrogation or something like that. For instance, if it's running on AWS, we can call the AWS API and we can ask a bunch of information there to figure out who this agent is without it actually having to provide like a password or something like that. Um, so that means that as more agents come online, Autoscale for instance, they all talk to the server and everything kind of just works. Um, when you deploy your workload for the first time, the workload talks to this workload API, which the agent exposes. And the workload is able to retrieve uh, SVID from this workload API as well. So when these agents come up, that is kind of the node attestation part, or we're testing the identity of the node or the agent, which has just come online. And when you deploy your software, we do a similar thing there, where we call workload attestation. So we can interrogate the operating system kernel and things of this nature to figure out the true identity of this workload, which is calling it. Um, that means that neither the instance nor your workloads need any kind of uh, secrets injected at deploy time or anything like this. Um, so the end result is we've established this kind of identity plane, if you will, which, solves a, a, which serves as like a very solid foundation if you're trying to build a zero trust network. You need, you need kind of this identity plane underneath. That's what Spiffy and, and, and Spire provide. So what have we accomplished in all this? Uh, we've actually accomplished a lot. We've stopped secret leakages for the most part uh, because you don't have to inject anything from CI/CD. CI/CD doesn't need to have access to all the secrets, right? You don't ever have to bake secrets into images or anything like that. Um, there's also like no need for shared secrets across different systems, passwords or API keys or anything like that. Um, we've also managed to like break down all the barriers between different cloud platforms, between different clusters, and things like this, as you see, because. All of Spiffy Aspire are totally platform agnostic. Uh, we've mostly negated the need for secret management as well. Uh, it turns out when every workload in your system has this cryptographic identity uh, that it can use to prove its identity to other things, you don't really need any of those secrets anymore. right? So connecting to a database, for instance, or connecting to other services can be done without having to manage a password or anything like that. You simply use the Spiffy identity that you're granted at runtime. right? Uh, finally, and maybe the coolest part, is that all the keys in this system are all short-lived, and because this workload API has a push mechanism, we can rotate them uh, very rapidly, we can revoke them very rapidly, um, and all sorts of cool things like that. So this is the magic, Spiffy Inspire. <laughs>